Yep, this is Nerd Genius Presents Playthroughs. Let's play Castle Crashers. And this is episode two, by the way. Um, here I am destroying these thieves, trying to actually get me some princess booty. Yeah, that's the way I'm like them. Get me some princess booty, cause I'm horny as a dog. Okay, this big guy's gonna try and get me. Down me up. I'm kicking some ass. And thief and uh, troll ass. This is a bit of um, a monotonous little stage because you're just going around pummeling people. Ooh, leveled up again. So it's this one. A uh, fun one, I suppose. So, how is everybody today? Having a good day so far? You doing anything special? Or doing anyone special? Mm -hmm. I love these little lizard horsey things, it's so reminiscent of Golden Axe. Which I've got a funny feeling that they actually copied for this game. Or something. I wouldn't say copied, but probably grabbed some elements from the uh, Golden Axe franchise. Please say you don't sue them. But it's fun, it's fun to watch. Because um, you really want to see some... Uh, see if you can point out some of the uh, homages that have been paid to these other games in uh, Castle Crashes. And for those wondering what's happening with episode uh, 2, of season four, which is Fable, and also season one, um, which is Dark Souls. Those videos are coming hopefully today as well, so uh, watch this space and stop complaining, because I don't like complainers. And thank you for all the lovely, l lovely um, praise for the uh, rewriting the book, and also those who critiqued it as well. Um, I've taken some notes and I'm going to actually uh, look into just strengthening it a little bit as well and, and taking away a few elements that were not working in the initial pilot. This is what pilots are there for in the first place so we can actually uh, work around them and um, do some tweaking for the next few episodes. I'm hoping that the season goes really well so that the next season uh, if there is going to be a season 2, I'm not sure yet. It depends how many people are actually going to like, comment and subscribe on the video. Because without, you know, a lot of people watching it, there's no point in actually doing a rebook show. But we um, will persevere, so to speak. So we'll see how that goes. I'm uh, The reason why I'm strengthening up my magic, by the way, is because... It's the best way to have my uh, knight defend himself. Because you could level up like strength and speed, but I'd rather strengthen up my magic so that I can just hit thousands upon thousands of arrows against my opponents. It would work a lot better, as you can tell here, when I'm doing with the thieves, just destroying them with these arrows. And also my big gigantic Norse god-like hammer. I am the mighty Thor. For those of you um, who watch this video, I'm just wondering something. Are, is any of you going to actually go to watch the Avengers? A few places are doing Marvel superhero marathons um, and are literally doing the films prior to the Avengers like Thor, Iron Man 2 I believe. Um, and the Incredible Hulk, so it's looking good. Hopefully they all can tie in together. But there was a bit of a confusion, I think, with the Incredible Hulk at the end, where they had uh, Tony Stark come in and say that he's putting a team together. And in contrast to Nine Man 2, they changed that, that subplot and decided they wanted him to not be on the Avengers team because he what didn't quite work out uh, so that sort of lays the tone in regards to uh, Tony Stark joining the team in the new Avengers movie but again we'll see how that progresses because all in all 
it's about story progression you know how these characters develop what's exactly happening in their universes in order to combine their stories into this new even bigger story and that's the thing um, come to think of it you have to look at exactly how these certain stories tie together for the Avengers movie otherwise it just won't make sense you know th this is the reason why most of these team up movies don't work because when these characters are individuals they're sort of singular entities they have their own stories their own uh, desires dreams so to speak their own character development and their own progression and then when you put a movie like the Avengers together a team up movie sometimes I'm not saying it happens a lot they don't stay true to the source material and because of that it turns things into rather a um, well I wouldn't say an awkward um, situation for superhero fans but it makes things a lot more harder for people uh, to come to terms with so you know well, speaking of um, superhero movies, because that's how I roll, I will recently uh, watched again the Green Lantern movie with Ryan Reynolds, and you know to say he was the best thing in that movie is probably an understatement. He he was that movie because that movie was contrived with so much bad writing and character development it just didn't know what the fuck it was doing literally and to have someone as powerful as Parallax in this film and use him the way that they used him and came up with this huge contrived storyline even they even had Corona who was supposed to who they say was the being that became Parallax which was a load of crap and it had both film critics and superhero fanboys like myself shun this movie because it was just not the kind of film that you would expect it to be especially with Hal's character it's all about coming to terms with your weaknesses you know coming to terms with um, your whole uh, basically the, the stuff that plagued your life you know Hal's fears were all derived from sort of childhood and, and his own situations and those things weren't tied together we didn't know why he was he had this whole um, issue with being afraid and how he was supposed to overcome it and it kind of destroyed the character in I wouldn't say in its entirety, but in regards to the the character's being and the whole structure of Hal Jordan's world, it, it, it didn't make sense. And it's a shame because it, it could have been quite an awesome movie, but they just, and there's a big furry thing coming after me and wants to eat me. But yeah, let's go back to that train of thought. It, it, it kind of didn't do what it was supposed to do and that kind of makes me sad because it had a potential to be one of the biggest superhero movies that DC ever made and it just looked like a big pile of shit and I think one review was saying that the effects budget was mediocre as well but it doesn't have to be amazing effects wise as long as the film told the story appropriately and it didn't manage to do that, which was, you know, it was quite sad. So, hopefully we'll be able to see something uh, a little more from them if they do decide to do a Green Lantern 2, which apparently that's what Warner Brothers is actually whispering. Um, we did get the April Fool's joke in regards to how, you know, Ryan Reynolds becoming Batman, which for me would have made me fucking laugh because I just don't feel that he could play Bruce Wayne he could play Batman or you know I, I've in regards to playing comic book characters I think you should just stay far away from DC characters as possible maybe focus on the new Deadpool movie that comes out because 
everyone wants to see it. Everyone wants to see what they do with Deadpool. But we'll, we'll see what happens in that one. I'm not going to hold my breath waiting for this movie to come out because we all know what 20th Century Fox is like. We all know what um, the superhero genre is like as well in, in regards to being a media cash cow. So it's either do it right or just don't do it at all. And with Deadpool, you have to do the character true to its own um, its own merits, basically true to its own textuality. Because if you can't do it right, then what's the point? No one's going to watch a, a Deadpool movie with a character rewritten into being a superhero and defending the world. Because that's not Deadpool. Deadpool's a merc for hire. He's a merc with a mouth that literally breaks the fourth wall. He's like talking to the camera and realizes that everything that, that's going on is what a sort of a proximity. But at the same time, everyone else thinks that the guy's nuts. And I think I think he thinks that as well. And that's the whole genius behind the character. He he's more tongue in cheek rather than actually a a serious Marvel hero superhero. Ah, oh, God, I died. Well, let's keep going. Because, uh... I need to, uh... Beat this... This new boss. And go from there. Excuse me. A bit of the hiccups there. So, we'll see what happens. If you can hear the sounds, what I'm hearing at the moment, I think it's police sirens. There's a reason. Because outside my flat, there's probably a bunch of drunk people acting like douchebags. As usual. Because that's what we have with D-bags. They all come out at night. Mostly out of the pub. They ruin it for everybody, don't they? Just like these bats are ruining it for me as they're chomping on my face. In my nether regions. Right, let's move on from here. Then can we big fat fish? And I've just lost my uh, my ride. Again, the attention to detail in this game is amazing. Newgrounds has done amazing things. Um, or should I say, the Behemoth? have done such amazing things with this game you know they've added all these little extra bits and pieces to it it looks like a bunch of mini games sort of like avoiding the thieves who are shooting arrows at you and, and killing the nasty creatures that are attempting to sort of eat you alive um, so that you can get to the end of level boss here which is this big fat catfish like creature which is hilarious because it just looks really really silly sort of bat me into a corner there. So anyone who wants to actually play this game and wants to pass it quickly, just do what I do, level up the arrows, level up the magic, because that, that's the best way to go. And there are some um, characters in this game that once you level up their magic, they're literally unstoppable. Closer towards the uh, the creature because the arrows and that have stopped. Ha -ha. He never got an arrow to the knee, but he got a cannonball to the face. That was creme de la creme of fish. Maybe I could make him into Chinese soup. Down, kitty. I love how the kings are barking orders at me. And when I first left him, he was quivering in fear. See, look, the arrows are just taking health off him at tremendous lengths. The best way to be on this. You've got to be on the ball when fighting these uh, certain types of creatures.
Has he got, is that a shark tail on his back? Again, I think that's tongue in cheek. You see that, that cutesy little bear that's riding him? It makes me laugh. Crap. Just punch me in the face. That's all you need a catfish with a mean right hook. It's like Floyd, Money Cat, you Mayweather. And there's another hairball. And he's dead! Okay, so we're moving on for that one. And let's move on to the next level. <laughs> Boat seems to have crashed. And we're setting up camp. This is the fun one, it's the one where I get to destroy cutesy little bears. Because everyone has dreamed of decapitating a care bear. I use this nice little wrench thing. I've got to literally go back to my um my weapons storage to see if I've got any you know updated leveled up weapons so I can use them and just kill something. Make things a heck of a lot easier. They're so cute, you don't want to kill them. But they are very deadly. Dun dun dun. Teddy has gone rogue. Yeah, across Ted. Think about it. So out of the all the superhero movies that are going to be debuting, like the Amazing Spider-Man, the uh, oh, what's the new one? The new Batman movie, Dark Knight Rises, the Avengers, and the planned JLA movie that's coming up. Which mo superhero movie are you dying to see? Apparently, there may be a sequel of X-Men: First Class, which I'm, I'm happy about. I'm just wondering how the hell they're going to make James McAvoy go bald. Because that's what we want to see. We want to see how Charles Xavier loses the, the wig. Because in the previous movie he was rather James Bond-like, wasn't he? In his whole... Uh, in his whole character. Very suave, sophisticated. Mr. Charles Xavier. But we'll see how it works. In actuality, in the comics, he was actually a bit of a pedo, believe it or not. That's um, why the boys had the uh, Charles Xavier-like character as a bit of a pedophile. Because he had this infatuation with a very young Jean Grey at the time. But they kind of uh, changed that a little bit. They sort of tweaked it once they uh, progressed his character a little bit. Now he's more of a traitorous scumbag, but still. <laughs> Doesn't matter too much, does it? Charles Xavier, the traitorous scumbag who betrays the X-Men to get himself a bit of powers. Speaking of which, um, if anyone's read the new Wolverine and the X-Men comics, they are quality. Literally quality. I haven't read the, the whole uh, Avengers vs. X-Men storyline yet but I'm going to be looking into it I'm waiting for all the issues to be released before I actually go into that series because I tend not to read something one until it's on its complete stages and I, I tend not to read the uh, the backup stories I, I tend to read the main story arc instead it makes things a hell of a lot more easier rather than reading like every single fucking issue that ties into it which doesn't actually tie into it it just has like um, a different story going on within that story, you know. Which for me, it's like with Spider Island, they had about over about freaking hundreds and hundreds of issues that were tying into the story arc. And um, really, to actually understand what the hell was going on, all you needed to do was read the Spider Island main 
comics and it makes a hell of a lot more sense. Anyone who hasn't read Spider Island, I would say date to all of you to uh, check that out. It's a great, great comic book series. Um, but I haven't. I, I want to read a few more in regards to uh, what's going on in Spider's life because there was a promise that someone is going to end up dying now that Spider Man has revealed his identity to the world. So we don't know who that is. It's one of his loved ones. I doubt it would be Aunt May because. May's moved on her life with uh, John, you know, Jonah's dad. She's porking her Jameson. Uh, maybe Mary Jane. She might actually be on the dead card soon. Who knows? It's a shame though, because you know I, I was always rooting for Mary Jane and Peter Parker. I think once they did that whole one more day story arc, it just didn't make fucking sense to me. You don't need the guy to be single. You don't need the guy to go around and start fucking everything with two legs in the skirt. All we need Peter Parker to do is just, you know, divert adversity, really. He needs to, to be this polarizing character that people are in tone with because of the way his life has sort of shaped and how, no matter what's happened, like um, the fact that his daughter was stillborn and the issues that he had with his uncle Ben and, and other situations that were plaguing his life Parker has managed to defeat everything you know and, and sort of stand prominent compared to um, other superheroes because you know no, no one has had that much shit thrown at him Speaking of shit having thrown at me, I've got two big, huge bears coming after me. Hmm. Try to lay some more magic on their asses. Yeah, and there's another one of the whirlwind bears. Seriously, it's like the uh, care bear's gone wrong, really, isn't it? Oh, I love this one, they've got this huge freaking cannon who are shooting arrows and bits and pieces at me. Seriously, Mr. Teddy Bear. Why am I using that arrow? I should be using magic. It's the best way to do it. Just to let you guys know, I've got to have an episode of Tech Genius up um, to answer a few questions about the migration and the merging of your Xbox 360's accounts, the live account and your normal account and showing you exactly what to do because a few people are having trouble with it so I thought um, I'll actually do a video on it instead. Um, if anybody has any new concepts they want to bring up from their genius let me know I would love to hear your ideas because I'm looking for a few more new shows and you know um, just doing playthroughs for me isn't enough I wanna you know put it to do do stuff that's more constructive I'm, I'm thinking of doing a uh, nerd genius shorts which will be coming soon but I need to get a good, nice little creative team together in order to um, do so so we'll see how that goes uh, my bitches are getting taken away no Okay, I'm in a big fat cave. I swear there's an animal orba outside here. Nope, there isn't. Okay. I think that's a different cave. So let's move on. And I know this video is uh, over half an hour long. There's a reason. Because I did quite a long playthrough, so I broke them up into some, like manageable chunks. I can understand if the majority of you don't like watching half an hour videos do apologize for this I just tend to do loads of bulk playthroughs and then filter everything out in between 
On a personal note, I went swimming today with uh, my little ones. It was a brilliant day. We literally went into the pool. My daughter was scared shitless. <laughs> She's a little three-year-old, of course she would be. Uh, so I grabbed her and popped her into the pool with me. It's, it's a kiddies pool, so no one drowned. But um, I literally had to show her how to uh, jump up and down in the swimming pool and let her feet could touch the bottom so she wouldn't drown. Had my uh, my youngest one, my six month old, in the pool as well, he was floating at the top because he had these uh, armbands on that allowed him to float, I think they're called floaties or whatever. But it was hilarious just watching him float there with his little self. My uh, one and a half year old was screaming because he, he didn't know what was going on. But once he realised he could float, he was alright as well because he had some armbands bands on too. And my five year old, she was just going crazy. She was literally just swimming and swimming and swimming. She didn't care, which was great. I love it when, when children just, you know, do and enjoy themselves. Because I think if you spend too much time dwelling on things or saying that I can't, Instead of I can, it makes things a bit more easier. You know, because if you dwell, if you're a nihilist, you can easily just look at things in a negative way and then you'll never get anything accomplished. If you look at things from the positive, then you, you tend to progress rather quickly. And that's what she's doing. She's progressing at everything she's doing. She's excelling and getting a heck of a lot of feedback from it. And yes, I know I'm, I'm halfway to death here. Well, not even halfway. I've got like minuscule amounts of life. But I've got him. <laughs> and he's farting. That's just nasty. Rainy like crazy here at the moment. I can just hear the rain pitter pattering on my walls and my ceiling. This flat is so badly made. It's not necessarily a flat, it's more so a bed set, but it's just literally really, the walls are paper thin. The place is just ridiculous. But a single man cannot judge his surroundings. At least I've got a roof over my head. Which most guys in my situation don't, so meh. Alright, we're on to uh, the final part of this video now, where we're going to be uh, attempting to rescue our princess. We'll see what happens. Let's first go after the killer bees. And no, we're not talking about the Wu Tang clan. Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with! Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with! Yeah. You like that? You like how I break it down? Do you want me to rap for you? Oh fuck, no, I'm not gonna rap for you. Yeah, that's horsepower, baby! Imagine putting a, uh, petrol pump in a horse's ass. That horse would probably be dead. You get done from by uh, Peter for animal cruelty. Damn. So we're gonna continue on to the castle. And again, most of these characters are not NPCs because they're all playable. Like the beekeeper, for instance, is a playable character. Bees, not so much, but you can use them as part of your magic. And they got lightsabers! See, like, the Star Wars fan in me is just jizzed in his pants. I'm shooting you with my arrows, you're gonna die now, ha 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 My dragon's hitting you with a fireball, I'm gonna kill you, you son of a bitch. You're gonna die. Cause I can get one of those lightsabers. You usually drop them at some point. Yeah, bitch. What happens when you got five on one, homie?
I just read today, and I know most people don't have politics, but something that really pissed me off as the political race heats up for the White House as they attempt to crown their new President of the United States Romney was it Mitt Romney has stated clearly that in his budget in order to reduce deficit he would tax and reduce programs such as Medicare that would help the elderly, the disabled and the low income and would focus more money on arming troops that makes fucking sense doesn't it god it's like George fucking Bush all over again wanted to go gun ho and kill people yeah here's an idea let's arm people instead of actually giving people health care mmm doesn't really work and he also wants to cut budgets to things that are like needed like it was literally what was it they were saying food assessment so you're literally looking at if food has gone bad you know taste they're testing this stuff and he's going to downplay that in order for more guns good idea so you're going to allow people to get sick not provide them with the health care when they go into hospital and literally just let them die so that you can have a 20% reduction in the deficit. Here's an idea. Why don't you go with the Obama approach of actually decreasing in small amounts certain aspects of public funding in order to actually reduce the deficit and also help those in need rather than take away from the ones that are in need and give more guns because you know guns solve everything people that's what Mitt Romney will actually want to believe because he's a fucking hypocrite I hate people like that literally they just all they care about is war 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 let's go and kill people let's give people the means to kill each other but the majority of these wars that have happened anyway are, are fucking part of our fault you know the British and the Americans because we're giving guns to these fucking morons who do you train the Afghanis? who do you think trained um, gave the guns to these people. Who do you think freaking gave Osama bin Laden the means to actually go out there and kill people? It, it, it's just ridiculous. And yeah, guys like Obama get shit on when he's trying to actually preserve peace, you know, and reduce the deficit and introduce free health care. But no, everybody thinks that he's a fucking idiot and you want to go and get a guy like Mitt Romney into power who's going to fuck your country up. That makes sense, Americans. Brilliant. I just hope people see reason. I really do.